Doctors prove the palm olive plan brings two out of three women lovelier complexions in 14 days. For the palm olive plan was tested on women with all types of skin. Dry, oily, even skin that was not clear. Yes, regardless of age, type of skin, or previous beauty care, 36 doctors prove the 14-day palm olive plan brings fresher, brighter, younger-looking complexions. So get palm olive soap and start your 14-day palm olive plan now. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Oh, I think I seem worthwhile Dwells in your eyes And the smell of your smile Dennis Day is brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. The Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, Charles Dant in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing the Academy Award winner, Zippity Doo Dah. Zippity Doo Dah, Zippity A. My, oh, my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Zippity-doo-dah, zippity-yay. Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. It's the truth, it's actual. Everything is satisfactual. Zippity-doo-yay. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. Oh, Mr. My shoulder, it's the truth, it's actual. Everything is satisfactual. Zip three do, da zip three a. Wonderful feeling. Wonderful Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly. Brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. You can actually see and test prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpaste prove that Colgate is preferred for flavor over every other brand tested. Yes, preferred over every other brand tested. And no wonder, for Colgate Dental Cream is the result of constant effort to produce the finest toothpaste in the world today. For cleaning teeth, for flavor, for sweetening breath. So see if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate Dental Cream America's favorite toothpaste. Try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And always use Colgate Dental Cream after you eat and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Well, since Willoughby's store closed down a month ago, our young hero, Dennis Day, has held several other jobs, but his latest has lasted by far the longest. He started on it yesterday, and the boss told him he could come back today. <laughs> of course, the fact that he's his own boss may have had something to do with it. You see, yesterday he invested his entire savings in a used car and became Weaverville's only taxicab company. The cab is now parked at the curb of the Anderson house, and Dennis, glowing with pardonable pride, is showing it to his girlfriend, Mildred. Oh, boy, isn't she a beauty, Mildred? Isn't she a dream? Oh, yes, it's very nice, Dennis. And for only $150. Of course, she doesn't have all the gadgets on her the 48th have. No, I suppose not. What kind of a car is it? 
1923 Essex. <laughs> but isn't that a little old, Dennis? All the cars the man had for $150 were a little old. I took this one because it runs on gasoline. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I guess the people here will be grateful to have any kind of a taxi cab in town. Oh, you never saw such gratitude in your life, Mildred. I've had four customers so far, and every one of them, when they got to their destinations, they got down on their hands and knees and kissed the ground. <laughs> Dennis, are you sure this car's really in good condition? Oh, just wait till you take a drive in her. Smooth as any car on the market today. Except she rattles a bit when she goes over some obstacle in the road, like the white line. <laughs> rattles when she goes over a white line? Well, I think I loosened her up a little yesterday when I drove over the top of that tree. <laughs> the top of a tree? Yeah, when I drove out of the used car lot, this tree was lying right across the driveway. <laughs> My goodness, Dennis, didn't you see it? It wasn't there till I started driving out. <laughs> Golly, I just hope you don't have a terrible accident someday, Dennis. Yeah, I hope... Oh, here come the folks. Morning, Mother. Daddy? Hello. Good morning, children. <laughs> Oh, good morning. Mother, look, this is Dennis's new taxi cab, see? So that's what it is. Well, you better keep your eye on it. Today's the day they collect cans and bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I think this is a beautiful car. Don't you, Mr. Anderson? Do I, Popsy? <laughs> you certainly don't. Well, you heard me, Dennis. <laughs> yes, sir. Come along, Herbert. Coming, my passionata. <laughs> Gee, I don't understand your mother's attitude toward me at all, Mildred Everybody else thinks I'm wonderful And I know in my heart they're right Oh <laughs> Well, don't you worry She'll change your tune when you start making good money with your taxi cab And I will, too, you'll see I've got a whole campaign mapped out to get a big tip from every one of my fares Well, have you really? Sure First I make him as comfortable in the cab as possible I point out the broken spring in the seat and show him how to sit So the worst he can get is a flesh wound <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And then as soon as we get going, I give him the crusher, my sob story. Your sob story? Sure. I describe a horrible life to him, pour it on until the tears come into his eyes and he pities me from the bottom of his heart. And then if that doesn't break him down, I tell him the story of my life. <laughs> well, I just hope you make a fortune and show my mother, that's all. Yeah, knocking my card just because it isn't a new one. Yeah. I wish I'd have thought of that before. I'd have said to her, you ought to have more respect for age. What if people said mean things to you just because you have... Second thought, maybe it's just as well I didn't. <laughs> taxi! Taxi here, mister! Taxi! Oh, the station. Oh, it's the only one in town, sir. Hop right in. Oh, very well. I'm going to the Weaverville Hotel. Okay. I guess I should have warned you about that, sir, when you slammed the door. Re <laughs> well, fix it up and let's get going. I'm in a hurry. Oh, yes, sir. I'll put it up front here with me. <laughs> okay, here we... Oh, you better sit a little further over toward the left-hand corner, sir. The left-hand corner? Why? Well, there's a loose spring in that seat and all of a sudden... Boy! <laughs> and you'll make the rest of the trip by air. Good heaven. Okay, here we go. <laughs> there, comfortable back there? There's a blanket and a hot water bottle on the floor. <laughs> I carry a flask of brandy in case we run into a change in the weather. How far is that hotel from here, anyhow? Oh, about six blocks. <laughs> well, pass back the brandy. I think I'm going to need it. Here we go. They lick that. But don't worry. I'll have her fixed in no time. Let's see now. What am I going to There. 
Well, there we are. Okay, we're off. What was the trouble? I don't know for sure, but every time she stalls, I just take out a part or two, and that seems to do the... Great Scott. Well, we'll be at the hotel within a few minutes. Gee, I guess you'll be the last fare I'll be able to accept today. I have to go over to the hospital this afternoon. The hospital? Yeah. You see, my poor old mother, they've operated on her 11 times. Oh, I'm sorry to hear. Yeah. We think there may be something wrong with her. <laughs> You think you've got trouble? My father was in a hospital for eight years. He was? Uh, well, you don't know what else happened to us. My brother fell down a flight of stairs and broke both arms. I lost both my brothers. The house burned down one night with them in it. How about my sister's child? He has two heads. <laughs> my sister's child hasn't any. <laughs> and fell one day on the trolley car track. Well, there's my, uh... Yes? This time you go first. <laughs> Never mind. Aren't we anywhere near that hotel yet? Oh, it's just a block or so now, and then we'll be... Oh, my goodness. She never shook like this before. No car ever shook like this before. <laughs> got a flat. A flat tire? No, the bottom of the car is flat against the road. <laughs> what? But I'm sure I can fix it in a second. Never mind. I'll walk the rest of the way. Oh, but Mr. I was a fool ever to get into this thing in the first place of all the stupid clumsy... Hey, mister, wait. Hey, mister. I forgot his briefcase, too. Paper's all over the place. I'd better see if I can't get... Hey, what's this one say? Deed to all land comprising Weaverville County assigned to Martin Joyce by the United States Land Office, April 5th, 1849. Holy smoke, have I got a new landlord? <laughs> Is the whole town? Oh, I better look into this. Gosh, Mr. Anderson, does it really mean that this man owns the whole town? Well, I'd hesitate to say before we see a lawyer, Dennis, but this certainly looks like an official land grant from the United States government. Yeah? They did do things like this right after the Mexican War. What Mexican War? 1848, don't you? 1826 was probably over by then. <laughs> well, in any event, we've got to get busy right away. Now, the mayor must be warned immediately. Yes, sir. I'll dash over to the bank and make sure that this grant is legal... And meanwhile, you take your car and get down to the mayor's office. Now, drive as fast as you can. Remember, the whole town is at stake. Oh, don't worry. I'll go even faster than that. I'll walk. <laughs> and now, before we go on with this story of a day in the life of Dennis Day, here's our young hero himself to sing Pianissimo. A melody was played Pianissimo, the harmony was so very sweet. I can't remember the name of that song, but I do remember dancing in your arms. And then a voice came through, Pianissimo, with lovely words that seemed I love you, darling, but all I recall are the words you whisper dancing in my arms. Pianissimo means soft and low, and soft and low were your sighs. Darling, now I know that tender glow. Was love shining in your eyes? We stole away the empty home and kissed goodnight while stars danced above. I can't remember the name of that song, but I do recall it. Help us all. 
fall in love, it helps us fall in love. Well, our young hero, Dennis Day, found an old government that indicates all too clearly that the town of Weaverville belongs not to its citizens but to the heirs of a man named Martin Joyce. While Mr. Anderson is elsewhere checking the legality of the deed, Dennis has rushed into the mayor's office to inform him of the dire news. Mister, i got to see the mayor right away. It's terribly important. I'm sorry, young man, but the mayor's leaving on a business trip in exactly an hour, and he can't see anyone. But i got to see him, I tell you. The owner of Weaverville is going to take it over. The owner of Weaverville? Sure. His family got the place after the Mexican War. I found out about it when I happened to look in the back of the, back of the taxi I was driving. You were driving in this condition? <laughs> Mister, I'm not drunk. I know. I was just being charitable. <laughs> Look, the owner of this town is taking the whole thing over under a grant to his family. Please, you got to believe me. I've dashed all the way through town to warn everyone. Do you want my name? I know it. It's Paul Revere, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's Dennis Day. And I tell you, there's a paper that says this man owns the whole town unless we do something. Oh? Very well. Let's see this paper. I left it at the Anderson's. Place. I thought so. There is one. You I... haven't got it. Don't you understand? I you left... haven't got it. <laughs> Look, that, that... That... Oh. Well? I haven't got it. <laughs> I thought not. And therefore, I repeat what I said a moment ago. The mayor is seeing no one today. But you got it. No one. Uh, pardon me. I'd like to see the mayor, please. Oh, yes, of course. Go right in. Thank you. Gee, I could have sworn that was someone. <laughs> it was. That gentleman in... You see, the mayor gets $2 for performing marriages. Oh? Uh, do you know Mayor Oldsburg? Yes. Then you know you'll see them. Never too busy for a marriage or a funeral, our mayor. Gosh, you mean that... Oh, boy, excuse me. I just had a sudden thought. I do hope he treats it well. <laughs> Poor little gay head. <laughs> out, Dennis. She went downtown with Herbert. Oh, my gosh. Look, Mrs. Anderson, I've done lots of little things for you, haven't I? Remember the time you asked me to paint the roof and I did? Yes. You fell off the ladder and almost broke your neck. Well, I can't do it. <laughs> but now there's a little favor you can do for me. What? Will you marry me? Marry you? Yeah, you see... Dennis, are you aware that I have a husband? Which makes an already revolting idea absolutely vile. <laughs> I don't mean really getting married, Mrs. Anderson. Gee, I know marrying you sounds silly, like a scavenger hunt or something, but... <laughs> Dennis! Oh, gosh, I'm saying it all wrong. But what I mean is, no one can get in to see the mayor unless they're getting married. So I thought we could go down there and pretend we were. Well, uh, it's about this deed to the town, isn't it? Herbert told me. Uh, yes, ma'am. We've got to save Weaverville, and I can't get past the mayor's secretary. He won't see anyone unless they're getting married. Well, I did hear of one other way, but I just don't feel up to it. <laughs> well, beauty to save Weaverville. Uh, how about the blood test and everything? Oh, they'll know at a glance that you have plenty. <laughs> Come on, let's grab the deed and get right down there. The deed? But Herbert's got it. He took it to the bank. Oh, my gosh. The mayor won't believe us without it any more than his secretary did. Well, Herbert should be back very soon. But the mayor might leave town any minute. We'll have to leave a note telling Mr. Anderson to rush right down to the mayor's office with the deed. Meanwhile, you and I'll stall the mayor off and keep delaying the ceremony until Mr. Anderson arrives. My goodness, do you think we can? We'd better. If we don't, we'll liable to get pronounced man and wife. <laughs> Good heavens. I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, don't worry. It couldn't stand up in court. It isn't legal for a woman to be re <laughs> Remember, Mrs. Anderson, we've got to put this over. Act kind of coy and fuss like a bride. Try to seem beaten and dejected like a bridegroom. Come on. <laughs> Hello? We want to see the mayor and be married right away. Uh, very well. What? You again? Yeah, this girl and I want to get married. What girl? <laughs> oh, you mean this is the bride right here? Yeah, there was nobody else home. <laughs> I don't understand that, and I congratulate myself for it. 
Are you quite sure you're serious about this, Mary? Oh, sure. I'll say we are. Aren't we, honey? <laughs> We're madly in love with each other. <laughs> We've been engaged for quite some time. <laughs> and now we want to get married. You know, I have a feeling you belong together. <laughs> And now may I have your names, please? Dennis Day and Clara Anderson. I'm Dennis Day. I never would have guessed. Now then, your birthplace, please, Miss Anderson. Chicago. Your age? 39. You too? What's the matter with Illinois? Don't they count the first 20 years? Just put down 39 years. Yeah, very well. Your age and birthplace, Mr. Day? 22 and a Chevrolet. Chevrolet? Yeah, Daddy picked a horrible time to run out of gas. I see. And uh, now one last question, which I simply dread asking. Has there ever been any insanity in either of your families? No, no. Thank you. There are times down here at the License Bureau when we just hold our breath. <laughs> now I'll tell the mayor you're here. Your Honor, there's a couple out here who want to get married. Well, send them in and hurry. I haven't much time. Go right in, folks. I'll follow and be the witness. Dennis, what shall we do? There's still no sign of Herbert with that paper. Well, just keep stalling. Anything we can think of. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Oh, well, well, good day, my friend. I'm in a bit of a hurry, but I guess you won't mind that, eh? Now, then, if you two will stand right here. Oh, that's fine. We'll begin the ceremony. <clears throat> Dear friends, we are gathered... Oh, wait a minute. I just happened to think. I forgot the ring. Oh, that's all right, my boy. I have a whole drawer full right here for just such cases. Oi. <laughs> here you are. <clears throat> now then, dear friend... Oh, wait. wait. I, I can't get married yet. I have no bouquet. A bride has to have a bouquet. Yeah. She certainly does, my dear. And here's a whole vase full of flowers. Just help yourself. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> now then... Dear friend... Stop the ceremony. Uh, now what's wrong? I don't feel I'm ready yet. Let's have a man-to-man -man talk. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why, this is getting ridiculous. I told you I was in a hurry. Do you want to get married or don't you? Oh, yes, sir. Well, all right. Then repeat after me. I, Dennis, take Clara... I beg your pardon? <laughs> I said I, Dennis, take Clara... If you take her, what do I get? <laughs> Don't take her, you take her. Okay, I'll take her. Wait till I ask you! <laughs> then you're the one who's in such a hurry. Please! <clears throat> now, <clears throat> will you, Dennis, have this woman? He tells me I'm delaying things. To be your lawfully wedded wife. To live together. Some nerve. In a state of wedded nerve. Oh! <laughs> will you, Dennis, have the state to. I mean, will you state, have this woman, Dennis? I'll tell you what, you stand here and I'll read it. <laughs> You do nothing of the kind. Oh, I've had enough of this. Now, now get out of here, the two of you. But, Your Honor... Get we... out! I'm not here to... Good afternoon, everybody. Gee, just like the United States Marines. <laughs> I'm glad I'm in time. Your Honor, I want you to look at this paper this young man found in his taxi. Oh, I don't want to look at anything at this. Uh, why, why, great Scott. Why, this is the Joyce deed. We've been looking high and low for this. Now we can send someone to Washington to get it set aside. Gosh, you knew about it? Why, of course we knew about it. My boy, you <laughs> saved this town. <laughs> Why, how can we ever repay you? Well, you might try money. <laughs> try money? Oh, ho, we'll do better than that. We'll send you to Washington to fight this thing. Uh, would you uh, like to go? Oh, you bet. I've got a cousin up there in Seattle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is... This is Washington, D.C. Oh, that place. Now, now listen. <laughs> this has got to be kept very secret. Uh -huh. Joyce wants that paper back. And if he sees you getting on a train, he'll know... Wait a minute, I've got it. Huh? We'll send someone with you. And the two of you can pretend to be a honeymoon couple. But gosh, who can we get? Don't look at me. I've gone as far as I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> we can't let anyone else in on the secret. But how about Mildred? She knows already. Absolutely not. But gosh, there isn't anyone else who knows except... Except... Hello, honey bunch. 
Hello, love bundle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, next week my entire cast and I will be broadcasting directly from Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C., where we've been asked to officially open the American Cancer Society's 1948 drive. I'll be back in just a minute to sing Schubert's Ave Maria, but first... Grand news, wonderful news. Now Luster Cream Shampoo comes in tubes as well as jars. Yes, Luster Cream, the utterly new cream shampoo that gives you soft, glamorous dream girl hair. Try Luster Cream Shampoo. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, tubes or jars, whichever you prefer, 49 and 25 cents. But whether you prefer the tube or the jar, you will prefer Luster Cream Shampoo. Be a dream girl. A lovely luster cream girl. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Hair that gleams and glistens from a luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to cream shampoo As the Lenten season draws to a close, here's Dennis with Charles Dant and the orchestra to sing Schubert's Ave Maria sung as only Dennis Day can sing it. week, tune into another Dennis Day show broadcast from Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C., brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Burn Smith speaking. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.